Okay, in this video I want to talk about rotating points in the plane using rotation matrices. So maybe you've seen a formula something like this. Uh, I'm going to actually derive this formula, so that's going to be the beginning part of the video. Then after that it's just kind of uh, just doing some, we'll do at least one quick plug and chug problem. So you come up with this matrix cosine of phi, negative sine of phi, sine of phi, cosine of phi. And the idea is if you've got some, some point with coordinates x0 and y0, if you take that, 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 that point and rotate it through an angle of phi, we do this arithmetic to come up with a solution. So let's derive that just to try to make it, you know, make a little more sense out of this. Alrighty, so here we go, x-axis, y-axis. Suppose we've got this point here with coordinates x sub 0, y sub 0. Now, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about this. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to think about rotating this vector. So the vector, so the vector, I can actually write this vector with vector notation. We use the little pointy brackets. So this is the vector with components x sub 0 and y sub 0. And you can also write vectors uh, as columns, x sub 0, y sub 0. That's another way to represent this same vector, the same line. So I'm going to kind of switch back and forth between these notations. I mean, you just saw the, you know, the column notation on, on the front page. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let, we'll let r, so we'll say r is the length r is going to be the length of that vector x sub 0, y sub 0. Okay, so the idea is this vector, um, x sub 0, y sub 0, this has made an angle. And we'll just call that angle theta. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this point and we want to rotate it, we'll say some angle phi. Okay, so here's my, we're going to rotate it. Try to make them roughly the same length here. So there's that one. We're not going to change the length. So okay, this one needs to be a little bit longer. Okay. So we're going to take that that point that was at x sub zero, y sub zero, and we're going to rotate it just at it to where it's at a new place. So this new angle that we're rotating it, this is going to be the angle phi. So okay, we're clearly going to get a new point here. We'll just call that x sub one, y sub one. And the goal again is to, you have some point that you're starting off with. You want to know, you know, if I rotate it by so many degrees, how do I get the coordinates of that new point? That's what we're trying to do here. How would I find these points x sub 1 and y sub 1? Okay, so a couple other, let's make a couple other observations here. Um, okay, so if I look at my original vector here, again with coordinates x sub 0 and y sub 0. We said that this is a length of r. We said that this angle was theta. So a couple observations here. Notice that we could use, you know, uh, SOHCAHTOA, basic uh, trigonometry. So let's see, cosine of theta. Okay, so since we've gone to the point x sub 0, we know that this is the length x sub 0. It's at a height of y sub 0, so those are, that's the width and the height of our triangle. So cosine of theta would be, well, that's the adjacent, so let's see, I always have to say it in my head. So cosine is the ratio of the adjacent, which is x sub 0, to the hypotenuse, which, hypotenuse, which has a length of r. So we could rewrite this. We could multiply both sides by r. And so x sub 0 is just going to be r times cosine of theta. We could do the same thing for y sub 0. That would have the coordinates r times sine of theta, because uh, sine of theta would be the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Okay, so there's some some stuff we can use. A couple other things here. If we look at our our other one, so if we look at our our other vector that we had. Okay, so this is now at the point x1, comma, y1. So since the length of this, the length of the vector, that hasn't changed. So since it started with a length of r, this is still going to have a length of r. 
And just like before, this is now going to go over a distance of x sub 1. And this is going to go up to a height of y sub 1. Well, let's think about this new angle. What's that, what's that new angle? Well, the new angle would be theta plus phi, because it had already traveled theta degrees, and now it's got another phi degrees. So this new angle here, this new angle would actually be theta plus phi. So we can actually do the exact same thing that we just did. We would get that x sub 1, that's going to be r multiplied by cosine. Well, now we're going to use this new angle, theta plus phi. And likewise, y1 is going to equal r times sine of theta plus phi. So just a couple things here. So all we're going to do at this point is now just, to, just simplify these two expressions using some trig identities. And then at some point, I'm going to bring this stuff back into it. That's why I bothered labeling this stuff in the first place. We'll bring these back into it. OK, so nothing too bad here, really, at all. OK, so let's think about this. So we said x1, that's going to be r multiplied by cosine of theta plus phi. Now here is where we're going to use our trig identities. So we're going to use a trig identity here. So the trig identity, recall that you, if you have a, a sum inside of cosine, you can rewrite that. So in this case, we would get cosine of, um, shoot, I should have wrote theta first. So we'll have r multiplied by cosine of theta, and then we get cosine of phi minus, we'll have sine of theta and sine of phi. So here we're just using a trig identity to expand this cosine of theta plus phi. We could rewrite this. We've got, well, r cosine of theta and then cosine of phi. Now we have to be careful. We have to distribute the r. So this would be minus r times sine of theta and sine of phi. But now this is where we're going to use what we had just a second ago. We said that r cosine of theta, that's the same thing as x sub 0. And r sine of theta is going to be the same thing as y sub 0. So in this case, I'm going to get x sub 0, just replacing this part, multiplied by cosine of phi minus r sine theta. We said that's going to be y sub 0 multiplied by sine of phi. We'll make a clever little observation here in a second about how we can actually rewrite this using a matrix. So we'll come back to that in just a second. But now we can do the same thing with our y sub 1. We said that that was r multiplied by sine of theta plus phi. Same idea, we're going to use an identity for sine. Well, the identity that you use for sine, it actually turns out to be sine of theta times cosine of phi. This one actually ends up with a plus in it. And then we have cosine of theta multiplied by sine of phi. Okay, so again, just using an identity. So this stuff is the same thing as that stuff. And now we'll do the same thing that we just did. We'll distribute the r. So we can have r times sine of theta times cosine of phi plus r multiplied by cosine of theta sine of phi. I'm trying to make sure I get my thetas and my phis correct here everywhere. And just like before, r sine theta, that's the same thing as y sub 0, k times cosine of phi. r times cosine of theta, that's going to be x sub 0 multiplied by sine of phi. So we now have these two expressions for x1 and also for y1. All right, so the interesting thing is now we can write these two, we can rewrite this, these two statements using matrices. So the way that we can rewrite that, notice that, that in both cases, the first ones you know, are multiplied by cosine of phi, and the second one we have sine of phi. Okay, the signs are different, different, but we can fix that. So in matrix form, we could write this as, we could write this as cosine of phi, negative sine of phi, and we can write this as sine of phi, and then also as cosine of phi. 
So notice if we multiply this by x1, or excuse me, x sub 0 and y sub 0, remember when we do our multiplication, we multiply across and down, so we would have cosine of phi times x sub 0 minus sine of phi times y sub 0, that would give us our value for x sub 1. And likewise, to compute y sub 1, we would take sine of phi and multiply that by x sub 0, which would give us this part. And then we would add to that y sub 0 multiplied by cosine of phi, which would give us the other part. So just using a little bit of, of, of matrix arithmetic here. And now that's, that's it. We've now derived basically this formula. Well, not basically. We did derive this formula that we started with at the very beginning. So the idea is, again, all, to make a long story short, all you're doing is if you know, you know, if you start with some point x sub 0, y sub 0, and you rotate it through an angle of phi, to figure out the coordinates of the new point, so the new coordinates x1, y1, to get those new coordinates, we just multiply by this matrix. So let's look at a simple example here. Let's actually do one. So again, all you're doing to derive that is just it's using some basic trigonometry is all you're doing. So suppose we want to take, so let's just, I don't know, I'm just taking something at random here. Let's take the point, we'll say, uh, let's make it 2 comma 1 and rotate. And I should say, you know, we're assuming that this, this angle phi, this is a rotation, this is a counterclockwise rotation. So we're going to rotate counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, we'll say by 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians. So all we have to do, we want to figure out what, what these new coordinates, you know, what the new coordinates of this, this point is going to be. Okay, so there's one, two, there's one. So we're taking that point. Again, you can think about the vector that points at that one. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees. So if we rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, my bad right angle there, it should be somewhere over there. So you could probably almost guess what the coordinates are going to be. But let's see, let's see what happens. So all we have to do, so to figure out the, the new points, we'll simply take, so we'll take cosine of 90 degrees negative sine of 90 degrees, sine of 90 degrees, and cosine of 90 degrees. We'll multiply that by the coordinates of the original point, which are 2 and 1. We'll do the arithmetic and see what we get here. So, um, so cosine of 90 degrees, I always still have to think about unit circles. Okay, so there's 90 degrees or pi over 2. So cosine of 90 degrees, that's going to put you at the top of the circle. Cosine of 90 degrees is going to be just 0. Let's see, sine of 90 degrees would be 1, but because of the negative, we'll have just negative 1. Likewise, sine of 90 degrees is going to be uh, positive 1. Cosine of 90 degrees is, again, going to be 0. So this is actually a common matrix, this matrix 0, negative 1, 1, 0. If you see this matrix, this means you're rotating a point about... 90 degrees counterclockwise, that's what it tells you. And you can figure these out too. You can also, you know, there's common ones for 180 degrees and also 270 degrees. Obviously, if you go 360 degrees, you're not changing any, anything at all. Okay, so the coordinates of this new point, let's think about it. So let's see, we would have 0 multiplied by 2, and then we would add to that negative 1 multiplied by 1. So hopefully you remember matrix multiplication. Then we have 1 multiplied by 2. If not, i got plenty of videos on those. And then we would multiply that by, we would have 0 multiplied by 1. We would add those values together. So let's see, what do we get? So 0 times 2 is 0. Negative 1 multiplied by 1 is just going to be negative 1. Uh, 1 times 2 plus 0 times 1 is still going to be 2. So we end up getting this new vector, negative 1, 2. So that means it points negative 1 unit to the left and 2 units up. 
So the coordinates of this new point that we've just found are going to be at the at the coordinates of negative 1, 2, which totally, absolutely looks correct to me. So that's all there is to it. You know, when you do these, uh, when you do stuff in three dimensions, obviously things change. Um, but we can talk about that in another video if you want to see them. But that's really all there is to it. So at the end of the day, if you just want the shortcut, you know, you need to know this matrix. Where does this matrix come from? Well, that's what we just derived. And then you're just multiplying, you just take whatever angle that you're rotating and just multiply it by the original coordinates, and that'll give you the coordinates of the new point.